Hello and welcome to Euphoria TV Breaking News. My name is Dr. David Bull. I'm a medical journalist and I'm delighted to be your host for this, our second show of October 2020. Now, this show concentrates on the novel treatment algorithm for allergic rhinitis made by the Euphoria expert teams. Until recently, the guidelines for treating allergic rhinitis didn't reflect the complexity of care and they were not widely followed. So, earlier this year, a new algorithm for treating the disease was published in the World Allergy Organization Journal and the Rhinology Journal, which promises to transform management of the condition. In a minute, I'll be talking to one of the authors, Professor Pete Smith from Australia, and Professor Ulrich Wan, a member of the executive board of Euphoria, about why this innovation is so groundbreaking and what it will mean for patient care. So let's start by heading live to the sunny shores of Queensland in Australia, where Professor Pete Smith is standing by. Now, Professor Smith is a leading allergist. He's also Professor in Clinical Medicine at Griffith University, and I'm delighted to say he joins me now. So, Pete, it's fantastic to see you. Let me start by asking you, why was there a need to create a new treatment algorithm for allergic rhinitis? Thanks very much, David, and it really is a pleasure to join you and share this information with uh, viewers. There is a need, uh, really, because an algorithm doesn't exist that covers the complexity of care of allergic rhinitis. Many algorithms are simply unidimensional. This algorithm engages all stakeholders, from patients to pharmacists to primary care physicians, their GPs, and also specialists, whether they be uh, allergist or ENT specialists or respiratory physicians. This algorithm actually looks at the complexity of care and looks at, uh, is the diagnosis right? Is the severity controlled? And also, is the patient uh, engaged? Is the patient using medications? Uh, are they using the correct ones? When to step up, when to reappraise, when to go to more intensive uh, levels of treatment. And it does so in a way that uh, no other algorithm has done before. So I suppose in many ways what you're saying is given the complexity of the condition and the fact that different physicians are doing different things and that some of the patients aren't following the guidelines, that really this is a, almost a rule book of a way to proceed. Yes, it's simply a map a roadmap that somebody can actually follow relatively easy. Uh, it is uh, complex. Uh, some algorithms are confusograms uh, that have got arrows going everywhere. This simplifies it, engaging the patient, the pharmacist, the primary care physician, and really uh, sets boundaries for uh, good disease control or not, and really reflects what happens in real life hmm. rather than in tertiary care. So uh, the majority of patients are not looked after by subspecialists. They're looked after at uh, the front line in uh, their GPs' practices and many patients by their pharmacists and many patients' self-care. So this gives a guideline of are things going well enough? Do we need to question it? And Euphoria has done an excellent job in bringing this forward and hopefully it will be part of mainstream attention in managing allergic rhinitis globally. And of course, you know, the buy-in from patients is absolutely vital. Would you say this algorithm is unique? Absolutely. There's not been an algorithm like this. Uh, it really matches up patients' needs and patients' awareness of needs. Um, one of the temptations in uh, medical care is uh, if, you, if a patient isn't working, step up their treatment without questioning, are you using it properly? Are you using it regularly? Uh, have we reduced your allergen exposure or irritant exposure? Is there another question going on? So we don't want to be purely medication driven. We want to look at big pictures and we want to do this with all uh, participants and uh, shareholders in uh, patient care. Well, Pete, it's been a great pleasure to talk to you. I'm very jealous that you're in Queensland where I think the weather is rather better than it here is in the rainy UK. Pete, thank you very much indeed for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks so much again, David. So now let's hear from our second interviewee on the subject. Professor Ulrich Wan is a member of the executive board of Euphoria and a lecturer and consultant in paediatric pneumology and allergology. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor Wan. Let me start by asking you the same question that I asked Pete Smith. Why do you believe the algorithm is so unique? 
Well, the authors of this algorithm uh, took the opportunity to address really uh, not only scientists who are usually sitting in an ivory tower, but to address uh, practicing physicians outside, as well as the patients who are suffering from a problem which is really uh, has become a public health issue in many of not only the European countries, but globally. Uh, I think it's time that we translate the evidence which has been collected over the last years and, and decades uh, for those who are really the important players. It's the GPs outside and the patients themselves. Well, actually, looking at the algorithm, I have it here in front of me. And as you mentioned, the GPs, we've got first line care, we've got specialist care, we have a list of symptoms that the patient would present with. And it seems fairly straightforward. It also seems to cover a wide variety of presentations. And I suppose in many ways what it does is it puts the patient very much at the centre of care. Yes, for good reasons, I think. Uh, I mean, we are not dealing with an uh, often or rare disease. We are dealing with a wide spectrum of seasonal or perennial problems, not only involving the nose. It may involve the eyes. It may involve, involve the lower airways. And we have to take this into account when we give a certain uh, way of expertise, a certain uh, amount of autonomy to the patient and uh, train him and help him to uh, give his own uh, part in controlling the disease. So what do you think the benefits for the patients are then? Is it just the autonomy? Is it the fact they're more involved with their, their disease? Well, most of this treatment will be home treatment and the patient uh, has to have a certain expertise to do the right decisions day after day that may change with the weather, with the climate, uh, with the season. Uh, and we have to uh, empower the patients, no matter whether they are children or adults, in order to make the right decisions, we have to give them the tools uh, which they then can apply at home. And we have to inform them about the possibility of immunotherapy. Yes, well, funny you should mention that. I mean, it, obviously, the arrows point to allergen immunotherapy. I suppose what I want to know is when do you consider it useful and appropriate? Well, the natural history of the disease uh, allergic rhinitis uh, is usually starting in childhood or adolescence. Uh, and uh, studies have indicated that we shouldn't wait too long because there is a crescendo period when uh, the symptoms are tending to get worse and worse with every year. So it is uh, good to at least consider the option of immunotherapy, no matter whether it's sublingual or subcutaneous immunotherapy, as early as possible, our patients uh, should have the expertise to make their own decisions and to know that once they try uh, to apply and integrate immunotherapy into the therapeutic concepts, they have a very good chance to really save on drugs and improve their symptoms year by year. Well, Professor Wan, it's been very enlightening to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time. Thank you. Well, that is it for this edition of Euphoria TV Breaking News. Many thanks to my guests, to Professor Pete Smith and Professor Ulrich Wan, for their fascinating insight into the new Euphoria treatment algorithm for allergic rhinitis, which will confer enormous benefits for patients and clinicians alike. Now, don't forget, you can also find more information and register for the Euphoria meetings on the euphoria.eu website, where you can also sign up to receive the latest news via email. And you can also follow us on Twitter. The handle is at Euphoria. That is it for this show. See you soon, and thanks for watching.